Well, welcome to Mesa Verde National Park. This park is a little bit different because it's primarily an archaeological site and it preserves over 5,000 archaeological sites for ancient Pueblo Indians that lived here at least a thousand years ago. So this ought to be pretty exciting. We're going to be here about a day and a half and we've got some ranger park tours planned and other activities. So we're going to be able to take a look around and see what's here, but this Mesa Verde National Park ought to be something quite spectacular. So we'll see you there at the visitor center. I'm really excited about checking this park out. The park is about 81 square miles or about 52,000 acres and protects nearly 5,000 archaeological sites. In 1906, Teddy Roosevelt established Mesa Verde National Park to preserve the works of man, the first national park of its kind. It's really incredible here, but we're going to go to the visitor center first, which is relatively new, and check it out and just get information inside. It's open from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily during the summers, but just check the website just to be sure. It's built pretty much like all the other visitor centers with convenient restrooms on the outside, places to sit in the shade. But we're gonna go look inside and just see what information we can get, and we'll meet you there. Over 500,000 people visit this park every year, and we came in early May, and the weather was a little chilly, but it made hiking so much more pleasurable and walking. It was a nice time to come. We learned a lot in the visitor center, talking to the rangers about where to go and what to hike, and the archeological sites found here are some of the most notable and best preserved ancestral Pueblo archeological sites in the United States. And the park map here shows where it's like fingers that you can drive down the Mesa canyons that the Pueblonians lived in and built these cliffs dwellings. And you drive along the road along the rim of the canyons and then you drive down these fingers. I like this map because it really made sense of how you drive along the ridge of the canyons and down to the far lodge and down to the two major tracks down to where the cliff dwellings are and the other parts of the park. So it was a good visual of where you are and what you can do. Only this section is opened all year round, so be sure to check the website. Well, we decided to head further into the park. And one note, the entrance fee for vehicles is $20 in the winter and $30 in the summer, but we had our annual pass that's paid for itself multiple, multiple times. The first stop we came to was the Mancos Valley Overlook first overlook you come to this Manco overlook and there's just a little step down here but that is just spectacular look at this you can see the snow-capped mountains on the other way in the distance as we continue driving in we stopped at the next stop which is the highest point in Mesa Verde National Park 8,500 feet elevation. It has a ranger station that used to be occupied all the time, an outlook for fires and other things. They say this is another great place to watch the stars. Look at the stars at night. Since this park is dark sky certified, plenty of sky to see up here. We've driven up to the Farview Lodge here. We're gonna see if we can check in a little bit early. Check-in's at four, but we got here a little early to see if we could secure our stuff and get our room. This is also the lounge and dining room area. So we're gonna go in here and see what it's like. Debbie and I highly recommend staying inside the park. We stayed two days, but even then it was a lot of driving. We were pretty lucky because check-in registration was right there and we got the very first building to the beside it. So we've got great Wi-Fi, I've already checked. We're in room 126 there and you can see there's several here, several buildings, but we're lucky enough to get pretty close. The rooms are actually quite nice. They're all handicap accessible, including your own private balcony for watching the stars. Debbie and I got everything stowed away and we decided to head out. As we drove along, you could just see where wildfires had just devastated this area in the past, all marked by the dates it occurred. 
We started by driving the first leg down to the museum area. The park's headquarters is here, and they've got great facilities for restrooms and other things you need before you go on your hike. I think we're going to do the petroglyph hike first and uh, see what's there and look at the museum too. Also in this area, there's a cafe and a little place to get some snacks. So if you time it just right around lunchtime, you can get a hamburger or a drink, just something to hydrate yourself before your hike. We're going to walk down here and just look around some more. Well, unfortunately, the museum is closed for renovations here. That's too bad. We really wanted to see inside. I guess we'll just walk around the building instead and see what's here. Since the museum is closed for renovations, we decide just to walk down here to the Spruce Tree House. This, from my understanding, is the most well-preserved of all the cliff, cliff dwelling uh, buildings. So, let's see what's down here. This dwelling was built in 1211 and had 130 rooms. It had about 60 to 80 people living there and about uh, six kivas, which were ceremonial houses. Petroglyph Point Trail has a difficulty of strenuous. It's a 2.4 mile round trip that forks off to the left going this way. It has an elevation of 227 feet. And it's a rugged, adventurous trail with steep drop-offs. And you hike along the side of the Spruce Canyon, squeezing between boulders and descending narrow stone staircase to reach a large petroglyph panel. From here, you have to climb a 100-foot cliff, scrambling up rocks and uneven sandstone steps to the mesa top, before returning back through the juniper forest on the mesa top to complete the loop. You can see the museum up on the cliff there. Do we go through or around, Debbie? I don't know. I guess we go through. Oh, that's a tight squeeze. Oh, oh. I guess this is a shortcut. You got it? Whoa. Shouldn't have eaten those biscuits. This is interesting. People have walked here for a thousand years. It's just amazing to me. The trail comes up under this big old rock and continues here over under this one. Along the way, you see just lots of little pretty plants flowers i don't know if you can see it back there but you can see the museum is still over there on the far side of the canyon up and we've walked all the way around the edge of this canyon and we're still going wow, you can see up through there it's coming down in here who knows this could have been like a sacred place or something this would have been another home that you could only see from the Lepetroglyph Trail, but this was clearly a dwelling as well. It would have been blocked up. You can see the old blocks here blocked up to the ceiling. And the fire in the back. Kind of carved around the edge too. That's just really cool. They were still going up. Up, 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 up. Just enough room. You can still see the museum in the far distance, right beside that canyon that sticks out. But we're still going on. Well, we finally arrived at the Petroglyphs, and this is a great place to sit in the shade and just look at the marvelous etchings on these walls. And nobody really understands and knows what they mean, but 
To everybody, they see something different. I saw like a mountain lion on one end with his tail and then a line that connected all these. Could that have been a trail map or could these be people that they honored or their leaders? Could it be a, a ritual or a tribute to their creator? It's just amazing to see and understand and how old and long ago these were formed. like one you can see the hand print here how it was just chipped out of the rock little by little almost a thousand years ago that's phenomenal we're still going okay spider woman we just came out of that canyon we just reached the halfway point i believe i believe that's the canyon trail down there but we reached the uh, halfway point to the petroglyphs. We just saw it climbed up the canyon and out. And I believe we're on top of the plateau now. Top of the canyon. It says museum this way. So we're going to hike out of this. Debbie's a real trooper. She made it. And I did too. By the grace of God or something. So, so that was a really kind of a... If you're afraid of heights, I don't know. If you don't like steep climbs, I don't know. But if you enjoy beautiful scenery, some of the best I've seen so far, it's the way to go. The Petroclist Trail. The trail back is just a breeze. Very easy to walk. It's a nice way to relax and look at the foliage on the way. There's all these like little prickly pears, little wildflowers, bushes that are blooming white. That was a fantastic trail. Fantastic. Altitude's a little hard and height is a little hard and climbing is a couple of places a little tight squeeze and the uh, steps were a little rough. But, but it is really worth the hike if, if you could do it. Of course, two old people in their 60s, if we can do it, you probably can too. These old trees are just fascinating. I'm, I'm anxious to find out how old they really are. Some of them are, you know, have a big trunk. So who's to say they're not 500 years old or 800 years old? But I'd like to ask the rangers how they are. We're walking around the top of the rim of the canyon. Well, you could just see the museum while it goes. So it's still a good little walk all the way back. But I love walking through this forest. I can just imagine the hunting going on, the food gathering, social life. It would have looked just like this, I guess. We're getting there, Deb. We just got to get around this one little path around the canyon. We'll be back to the truck. Okay, the trail comes out right up here on top of this canyon. We're going to walk around the top of this canyon and be back at the museum you can see all i think i see the truck on the hill you can see all along this cliff several little dwellings they would have ladders up and down those and ways to climb up some were for storage some were for living down to the main uh, i think that was the spruce tree dwelling the most preserved one we stopped at this tower. It's just like a, I don't know, quarter mile off the main road. And just to see, it's just an old archaeological site. They really don't know what it was for. It could have been a cistern. It could have been a tower for watching. You can see quite a ways around. You can also see where the fire, I think it was 20 years ago, burned this whole top of this canyon down it's unfortunate but these could have been ceremonial towers um but they just don't know but it is interesting and old just off the main road very very close is the far view house community it's easy to park it's just a loop here that you can stop at but we came here to see uh these old ruins which <clears throat> would have been the center of town it's one of the oldest structures here, I believe, but 
it's hard to imagine that this air this this room here this house built has like 40 rooms and the other house down there where debbie is was also built at the same time and they were built one at around 1000 a.d i mean 1000 a.d i mean can you believe that that's how old these are and I think there's some trails that go around them too, but I don't know if you can see in these rooms, the doorways are still standing from 1000 AD. They said this would have been the center of town, but just try to imagine, you can read about it here. There's sort of what the structure looks like from above, but just imagine how busy this would have been with people going from the lower house up here to the upper house, children playing, the conversations going on this was the pipe shrine house this is what the sign says it says on this sign that it was named the pipe shrine house because in 1922 uh, so the smithsonian institution came here and dr fuchs i believe that's how you pronounce his name D discovered and uncovered like tw a dozen of these pipes um, tobacco pipes so it got named the pipe shrine house these were an agricultural people so maybe things were stored here i just can't get over that it was built in 1000 a.d and it still looks this good i guess because of the arid climate that it preserves it following the path from the community house down there we come up to this area it's just a short short trail called uh the tower it's a really cool structure in fact it's a national historic civil engineering landmark um it's a reservoir and this thing was built around 900 AD. And it looks like a double wall. They packed mud in here. It, would have, it said it would have taken an enormous amount of effort. But they know that it was used to collect water. They've even, I mean, even as late as not too long ago, years ago, it still had water. But anyway, this is the Farview Reservoir. And I guess it ran downhill towards the houses the community that we saw just earlier after the water reservoir the trail takes us to the megalithic house Let's see what that is next we came up here to see some of the earliest known archaeological findings it's known before it's big stones but basically these were kivas they were ceremonial homes where they sat inside and it would have been covered with clay and they would live here Debbie and I called it a day and headed back to the Farview Lodge where they have a nice restaurant there but you must have reservations you. if you want to dine yes, there. I had the chicken dish and she had a ribeye. They were both delicious. Then we settled in, sat on the balcony and watched the Milky Way travel over the night sky. We're here at the Farview Terrace where we booked our tour for the park one of the rangers is going to take us around show us we saw a lot of it yesterday but we really didn't know what we were looking at so the ranger is going to take us around and explain a lot of the sites and that'll be really good too so you can book those tours ahead of time which i recommend doing but the far view terrace is where they serve breakfast you can get breakfast here and lunch uh, it's limited i guess maybe during the summer they open up more counters and uh, serve more people but right now it's pretty sparse but it's opened at 7 a.m. so you can get your breakfast here and then we may come back and have some lunch here but we're gonna get with the ranger I think we got about 35 people here this morning and we'll go around and see what's in the park we hopped on the bus and we began our tour back to the first stop we had originally been to the first day we came, the highest point in Mesa Verde. It was nice having a tour guide explain everything around us this time. Our second stop on the tour, 700 year tour, is this pit house, 600 AD, probably one of the oldest I guess. 
The first Pueblos were built around 650 AD and by the end of the 12th century they began to construct the massive cliff dwellings for which the park's known for. They eventually all disappeared just driven out by social and environmental instability and there were severe and prolonged droughts. This was an early home that would have been completely covered in clay and mud. Our next stop is the Square Tower House Overlook, 1200 AD. We'll go down here and take a look. Oh, there it is. Wow. Look at that. Our next stop on the tour, the Mesotop, Mesotop Sites, 900 AD. So this village had a 1500 room building and <coughs> over 200 kivas. Blows your mind. Anyway, so as you look, um, when you first come through the door, this first um, kiva was built in about uh, 900, the other one about 800. When the people in 900 built their kiva. This is one of the best preserved kivas in the park. It would have been covered in plaster and covered over the top and it had a hole in it where they would climb out from a ladder. And if you notice this kiva over here, you can still see all, almost all the plaster on the walls. Wow. Okay, we're going to go back to the Our next stop is Sun Point View, 1200 AD. And there's a little seashell right there. That's the only fossil I know of in the whole park. Hmm. Um, be really careful when you get down there. You're actually walking on the side of the mountain, so it's very uncomfortable. 550 CE to 550, 750, 1100, 1200 is where we're at. About 18 inches a year of precipitation be it snow or rain. I can tell you it's a beautiful sight. I always, I have to journey up here every winter, especially right after a snowstorm because this is absolutely gorgeous. You know, you got snow everywhere and then you look back at Cliff Palace. All of this area would have been like a small city with thousands of people living here. That's the fire temple and there's actually the white plaster white paint is original from 1200 AD. Yes, they're up here. Yep. Next stop is the Sun Temple. This is a cool site built on top of the canyon. People started leaving here around 1200, 1300 AD and migrated out. where we just were, overlooking that canyon. Hey. Some narrow doors, aren't they? It's amazing, but every little divot that you see on these stone blocks are individual strike marks from another stone. They had to just chip away at these stones until they formed these bricks. And the little stones in between the bricks are called plinket stones. They would plug these into the mortar so it just didn't use as much mortar. We really enjoyed this 700 year tours and it's really, I think, well worth it because the tour guide has so many stories and they explain everything at every stop about how the people lived and what they did there. So it was very, very interesting. Well, we drove around the whole other leg of the Mesa Verde National Park into a, the first leg, which is a 12 mile drive down to the step house, which they just opened May 1st. It's the first day they allow anybody back down here. So it was really interesting drive. You can see a forest fire that 
just wipe this place out. We're going to take a little hike down to the step house. It's one of the few I believe you can go in. This is a nice trail. The CCC built these trails and really this whole park back in the 1930s. The average worker made about $25 a month and they were required to send 20 of that $20 of that home to their families or wife and they were allowed to keep the $5 a month. So most of those people in the, most of the people in the CCCs were like in their 20s 17, 18, 19, 20 somewhere in there. And they built all of this. What an amazing job. Oh, this would be beautiful in the summer with the leaves out. Yeah. Probably hotter, but... Mm -hmm. There are park rangers here that will answer any questions that you have. This keeve here at the step house still has the original wooden poles, still has the plaster on it. This is unbelievable. How preserved this is. Has the ventilation. This gives you an idea of what the kiva would look like. You can see the hole in top that they would crawl in and out of. It's hard to imagine that this wood that's stuck in that plaster is from 1000 AD. I mean, look at this. You can actually see the foot holes, the hand holes carved out for that. It was interesting, when all of this was discovered in only the late 1800s, everything was remain, remaining intact, just like it was, because the local Native Americans there, the Pueblos, considered all of this sacred, so they hadn't touched a single thing. So just imagine the artifacts that they found. Amazing to think you could take this original path into the step house of these cliff dwellers. You can see the original smoke from the fires that they had. I try to imagine what life was like then, but imagine everybody running around, children running and playing, and I don't know what all these rooms were for, but mostly storage, I think. But even look at these old and ancient timbers still stuck in the plaster from 1000 AD. Some of these rooms for, were for storage, some were for living, and some were for uh, worshiping and rituals. You can see here where maize was actually ground in the stone. We came down that path on the other side of the canyon, down the stairs, along the winding path, and then into the canyon where they lived. Then you come back out this way, wild path winds back up and around, and out to the top. Debbie and I really enjoyed this park. We just love the history here. But it was time to leave and head on out. So we're going to go to the next park to see what else awaits. So this is Goolsby's Adventures and we'll see you at the next National Park.